But it is homecoming. I'm excited about that too. Um, seven o'clock game against Olivet. You know, so yeah. I, I think, and I think, are they the Tigers? Olivet, yes. Yeah, I think they're the Tigers. Yes. Purple and, and gold, right. And we were talking um, yesterday. We were talking a little bit about the season thus far, and and learning about it. And and we'll be talking about football on and off a little bit today, um, as part of uh, Coach Q being the head coach of the Judson Eagles, and obviously Judson. It's kind of cool homecoming yeah. week. You yeah. know, you come home and all the alumni are starting to yeah. visit. And yeah. and what I I remember reading it, but you actually were. Uh, part of the staff there prior to I was. becoming head coach. I was, yeah, yeah. Last year, yeah. I coached the DBs um, last year for, like, you know, I was kind of like a stipend guy. So I was kind of like really, really part time. Um, yeah, last year. So, but not only that, then I thought I had read somewhere uh, that you, did you coach track there as well? No, so I coached, I coached track at Grays Lake uh, North. Okay, High so, school. You, so yeah. you were t- you were coaching in um, Illinois right. before coming to Judson. Before coming to Judson, before coaching football, I was coaching track at a high school in Illinois. Yeah. Okay, and so my guess then, because I do remember when you were growing up, you were yeah. in track in school. Oh, absolutely. I'm from Texas. You know, track and football go together. Well, track and anything go together in Texas. You you have to run track. It's just part of the mandate. See, and to me, when I think <laughs> Texas, being an athlete in Texas, when I think it's in Texas, I think, man, that's a hot thing to be running track because that's an outdoor sport, obviously. Or is yeah. it indoor in Texas? No, it's outdoor. You know that heat. You got. You know, I'm just. I'm just. I need the heat yeah. to survive. Yeah, you're getting ready. You're going to be dreading the next few months. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, can't stand. I, I like the cold too, but it's just cold too long here. You know, it's just yeah. cold. It's, it's 20 degrees in May. That's like, true. Sheesh, you know, so. it, you know, I said it had to be with climate warming or something. Yeah. One of the technical terms that they use because we used to have it. Do you remember when it was May and Memorial Day? Yeah. Right yeah. away, that's when summer started, and then yep. by September. So it was a normal routine right. for weather. Now, all of a sudden, our summers don't start till July. Till July. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I, don't, I also don't like that it's getting darker earlier and all that stuff yeah. already, but uh, <laughs> that's here nor there. So what did you, yeah. um, you specialize in in track when you were in high school? Um, so I was a sprinter. I was a sprinter. I did the, um, the 100, the 200, and the relays, all the relays. I ran the, uh, the 400 every now and again, you know, just to get my mind, my mind stronger and yeah. um, that kind of stuff. Everybody hates the 400 but um, it's really a good race for you to build mental toughness. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Your body's not going to stop. It's a, that's when it comes up here. That's right. That's right. So when now, so going from track to that, and then when, when a job became available in Illinois after your um, career, yeah. and, and again, we'll talk about that because we want to get to know Coach Q. Yeah. Um, but like I said, that just, that had caught me off guard. And yeah. I said, track is something that I guess I knew it. And it yeah. kind of goes hand in hand really with football because yeah. it's all about, uh, um, speed and it's all about strength and it's all about endurance that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, uh, did that become a natural progression or is it because one se- one was part of the season, the other one was the other part of the season, so it was well, obvious to go that route? Well, at that time I was searching for purpose. I didn't want to coach. You know, I was telling God, I don't want to, I don't want to coach football. I knew football. I didn't want to coach football for sure. Right. You know, but I was searching for purpose. I was in my word. I was praying. I was like, God, what do you want me to do with my life? You mm-hmm. know, and um, a, track, a track job came up. You know, I was, uh, matter of fact, I was, I was, I was a substitute teacher you know, for those classes, for, for Grace Lake North. Uh-huh. And then they saw me, and they saw my pedigree, you know, like, man, we got a co- we got a track coach job open. Do you want to, you want to help us out with that? I'm like, sure. You know, I try it and end up falling in love with coaching, you know, um, end up falling in love with track too. Cause track is like, you don't have to prepare the guys. There's no film prep. There's no, you know, game planning. It's just, let's go run. Let's go get our technique down, fundamentals down. Let's get in shape. And they go compete, you know. So, um, and that's the that's the part I think that for track has always been a sport in my mind. Um, I was not a runner, but yeah. track was a sport. I could cheer the runners on. But yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you got to have the cheerleaders too. Come yeah. on now. Um, but uh, is always part of it that a lot of the work comes on their own. Um, Absolutely, you know, yeah. because even whether it be cross country mm-hmm. or down to jumping, down to, everything is about yeah. building the the strength that you need to be able to fulfill the task. Yeah, to me, like track is the the one sport where you cannot have a day off. Right, like, you can have a couple of days off in football and still have a great game, um, but in track, man, you you got to put it in. It, like it's gonna like your time is gonna reflect, you know, how you've been working. Mm-hmm. Period. I've always been envious of the people, and unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I'm never too old to start, I guess. But I've always been envious of the people who have to live off of that um, uh, the endorphin. You know, they have to yeah. live off of that. I have to go, or I just am not myself to start the day, especially people that do it early on in the morning. Yeah, 
Yeah. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? I mean that um, there's people that when they uh, exercise and they're mm-hmm. like, man, I got to get the adrenaline going. I just have to do that. Yeah. Like they, that's just a must to yeah. their having a good day. Yeah. You know, it's it's the way that they start out. And yeah. if they do it at night, uh, yeah. whatever. I've always been um, very envious of yeah. that. Because uh, obviously I've got energy and strength to keep up through the day, but mm. there's something about a mindset that's taking yeah. care of yourself is number one. That's right. You know, and if you don't do that, then you're really no good to anybody else out that's, there. That's funny you say that because I feel like that's what I'm turning into. Uh-huh. Like if I don't work out, I feel like my day isn't as powerful. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, but, you know, also, I, you know, it just depends. But I, I think that's what I'm kind of, you know, becoming yeah. too. Well, I start, growing. Yeah. I start my day, I think, a little bit more as, uh, I don't want to say meditate, like, mm, kind mm. of meditate. But, uh, but <laughs> that's I a have, good way to meditate, yeah, though. Yeah, it mm. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I have a, um, I have a, I have a book. I have a, a, women's, a women and God kind of devotional book. Okay. Yeah, that every day. That What's it's the just, title of it? It's for women. It's God for women. <laughs> God for women? Yeah. It's about, it, okay. and it kind of leans a little bit more towards some of the stronger, powerful female um, uh, verses in the Bible, and it always has some kind of story that goes with it and then reflects mm. a Bible verse that goes with it. Yeah. So I start my day like that. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. I think it's 365 devotions for women okay. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So it's meant yeah. to be one a day. And then it's another case, but I do find myself, mm-hmm. you know, you just, after you get done, I this is how it always yeah. ends up, or sometimes I'll read it with my husband, and at the end of it, we're always like, ooh, that was a good one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, you can tell, like, all right, that's going to be something that'll stick mm-hmm. with you and stay with you. Other ones that's you really read good. and you go through, but yeah, yeah. They, they mean a little bit more. That's right. That's right. That's right. So going from now to the track side of it, yeah. like I said, and then and coming up here, so you were in what you said, the 400 and sprinting. Did you not yeah. want to get involved in the other ones, or did you just like the running part? Yeah, I was just fast. Like, you know, my coaches did a good job of putting me in the you know, best races. I was one of the fastest guys, so. So I had to run the sprints. Okay, now that would just lead me to think then mm-hmm. what made you, then what positions mm-hmm. were you going? Because if you were a sprinter, you yeah. think it would be somebody who's a little bit more as a runner versus, yeah. you know, the positions that you played in the fo- in football. No, yeah, no. So speed carries over to the, the skill position in football. The yeah. defensive backs, the cornerbacks, the, the receivers, anybody anybody with speed it, in football, though, is, is, is like, you know, I, I could imagine a lineman with some real speed. I got a one on my team with some real speed. So speed, like speed is just like running track for football players is just, you know, phenomenal. It just carries over so much into the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can see that because there's some times you can tell people on the line if all of a sudden they're uh, unexpectedly end mm-hmm. up, somebody fumbles the ball, they grab it, they get in there and they're ready for the oxygen. Exactly. They're you know, athletic that's just too. Not, right. Yeah. But they're athletic in a point of my, my point is to be strong on the line. That's right. You know, yeah. my point is not to run down the field the whole time. Yeah. You know, that's not right. my position on the team. But so. you still have to be fast to get to certain positions. To oh, block. absolutely. You know what I mean? Like it helps to have some speed, you know, to be athletic too. So. Well, I think if, especially in football, I think if you can't, um, if you can't completely take on your opponent mm-hmm. one-on-one, you know, whoever yeah. it is you're guarding, who you're protecting, whatever that's the right. case in position, that's right. if you don't have the strength and endurance and speed to do that, mm-hmm. you're not going to be successful at the task yeah, that day. Yeah, because the game boils down to winning your one-on-one matchup. Yep. Every play, somebody has a one-on-one matchup that they have to win within the parameters of the, the uh, offensive play call and defensive play call. That's mm-hmm. what it comes down to, winning my one-on-one matchup. Right. Yeah. You know, I found that um, being not as much as a coach, but I always think that the more positive energy you can bring to a team, whether it be a workplace, whether it be yeah. a team, uh, a coaching team, whether it be a group or an organization, the leadership you bring into that usually has to culminate from things that you've learned throughout your time. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you've learned throughout the years. There's some things that I always thought, like there's some people that I um, uh, coached mm-hmm. me or, or taught me or trained me that, you know, I might not have liked it at the time, but it stayed with me and yeah. it's become such a tool. And I found I had to start using that in my outside world. Yeah. You know, yeah. did you ever notice that with anybody growing up, whether it be through high school or through um, college or professional, that there's yeah. some people that brought something to you and it, and it really stuck with you? Yeah, and it just, it just boiled down to, you know, really them thinking differently right you know it's it's all in the mind like this whole life the christian life the the you know football whatever you do it's all between your ears you mm-hmm. know the way you think you know how you process and the the thoughts you continue to play with you like even even anxiety right anxiety is just you replaying the worst case scenario right <laughs> yeah i i, I try you know what i'm saying like you exactly. just replaying the worst oh my god that's gonna happen what if you just replayed the best case scenario mm-hmm. you wouldn't be as anxious you know what i'm saying yeah, there's something that happens, and, and you're still young yet, but there's something that I found that as I got older, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, instead of dreading and, and all this tasks and this crazy day I have ahead of me, I yeah. realized that in nine hours I'll be sitting home and, and it all went back past. 
It's right. So, right. Why right. spend the energy trying to uh, worry about trying it? Trying to figure it out. Trying to, you know. So, and that's what, you that's know. That's a hard, that's some people, it's diffi- it's me, it's it came naturally. It's a but, learning yeah. process. It's like, it's a lifelong process. Uh-huh. You know, as you, as, as you grow. And the best leaders, the ones you, the ones that mentor me have mastered that process. Like, yeah. I have mastered my thought process. Like, I control my thoughts. I control my emotions. Mm-hmm. I don't allow them to control me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. I think that's some of the best tools. And, and folks, just a reminder to everybody out there, you're listening to the Coach Q Show. Quentin Demps actually came to us uh, from a uh, long story. So you started in Texas, and yeah. then you went to college, then you went to play um, uh, football, professional football. And and sometimes I think it's nice, and, and uh, uh, Quentin and I kind of uh, were speaking, and it's nice to get to know the people. That's right behind it yeah. and uh, the philosophy behind it right. too. And so you were just saying too, that even, you know, we, we tend to refer and go back to some of our spiritual beliefs yeah. basically for the fact, because you're also um, planning to continue that on in yeah. uh, theology, right? And, and uh, to be a, are you going to be a pastor? Is that what your hope you know, is? Or is it uh, using it in the yeah. uh, children's field or the kids? No, I, you know, I think my platform is, you know, coaching. Uh-huh. I think um, the Lord has, um, the way I'm made, the way I'm built, I think the Lord has, um, you know, called me to coach. You know, right. I think some, some coaches are just chosen to coach. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't choose this profession. You know, I, I sought God for my life's purpose, and this is where he placed me at. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, like, you know, credit to, you know, Judson and the admin, but I didn't really interview. I didn't have mm-hmm. a resume, you know, so it was just more so God opened this door and like, man, this is what I want you to do. And that's how I live my life. Like, every every day, everything I, everything I do, you know, from this point on, it's, you know, uh, God ordained. You know, I, I wish spirit. it's yeah. interesting. I, I, I kind of wish uh, more people would look at that. Like somebody always says, OK, uh, uh, when a door closes, a window opens or window, yeah. whatever, the vice versa. But I've also thought, um, you know, and tried to raise my kids in a way that if um, somebody offers something to you, don't quickly turn it away. Right. Absolutely. Because not everybody gets that offer. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes people need to look at it like maybe it's a higher power that's bringing it to them and helping to direct them where they should be going. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, I and I, it, how how do you learn the difference? Well, it's a level of conviction that you have. That's like, true. It's a level that you you know that in your relationship with God that you have come to that you know I've surrendered everything I do to to Jesus and everybody ain't there yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It took me a while to get there too, but at this point in my life, and that's why I'm a leader for Him because I I've surrendered everything. I my thought process, how I walk, how I think. I'm like, man, God, is this okay? Mm-hmm. Is this what you're doing? Like, what do you want me to do? You know, so, again, that's that's why he has placed me in a position to lead because I follow him as a, you know what I mean? I, I, he, he leads me as I lead other people, point blank period. You probably are the best definition of that, too, because I, I remember when I first met you, and I don't know if it was our first show or if we were talking in person, I can't remember, but um, you were pretty adamant and defined saying, I didn't want to have anything to do, do with football. Yeah. And yeah. uh, so to go for something where football was your life, yeah, exactly. You know, and then to yeah. say, you know what, that's it. You know, I'm done. I don't I put want to deal with it anymore. Yeah, yeah put exactly. It, I, yeah, I, I so put it that away. totally shows a, a conviction. And yeah. you know, it's his past, so I'm doing it. You yeah, know, right. and and I, right. I I kind of dig the fact that it, it wraps around kids, mm-hmm. and, and it just makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's there's a certain peace that you can go to bed with, sleep well at night, knowing yeah. that you've got that kind of serenity. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I still, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I still wrestle with it because. I think everybody know, did. I don't think you know, you'd be sure. human. I think yeah, your human right? part's yeah, got to come through there just like, a little bit. Like, God, you sure to say it? Uh huh. You know, but. But that's what I mean. That's the difference between, yeah. and, and you know, you're talking about one shoulder speaking, you know, right, there's, right, you have that constant right. battle going back and forth in your yeah, head. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, you know, I get confirmation throughout the day or throughout the week you know here show like a kid to come to me like man you know text me like you know man thank you for being a coach like i love what you're doing i got your back and it's like, like kind of like god like you know i got you man good job you're doing well mm-hmm. you're in the good you're in the right spot you know what I, mean? you know, I love that you say that yeah. i we i grew up in uh way more than you need to know i guess but i grew up <laughs> in a, a christian background okay, okay? we were dutch so we were Christian reform. So my, uh, my family was uh, Dutch, I think, or, you know, anyway. And so we had church twice a day. And, mm. and I don't know any kid that says, yay, exactly. let's go to church yeah. to twice today, right. you know. Right. So you don't know anybody. And, and kids kind of yeah. grow up um, uh, learning what their plan is, right? Mm. They, they, they find their appreciation of it on their own terms. You can't yeah. force a kid to say, you, you know what, listen, no, you're going to go to church and you're going to like it. Yeah. It's not happening. I can, my best uh, probably picture of churches. I remember going there and my dad would have those little pink mints in his pocket, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. 
And we'd yeah. be like, okay, if we did okay, <laughs> man, one of those is coming three steps down. It's right, coming right, to my right, assistant right, view. Right, yeah. But I've noticed then as um, we got older, and because you working with kids, mm-hmm. I noticed that as my kids got older mm-hmm. that – um, they had to find it on their own terms. That's right. I don't think Absolutely. any of my kids, mm-hmm. as soon as they went out on their own, yeah. said every Sunday I'm going to church. Yeah. I can guarantee that didn't happen. That's right. That's but right. now, mm-hmm. looking, looking, you know, five, six, seven yeah. years down the line, now yeah. they're very strong in their faith. So I always figure you, well, there had to be something good that oh, we did sure. in there because they yeah, saw more sure. of the positive than the negative. Absolutely. You and, know? God, and God sees that too. You know, mm-hmm. you trying to parent as best you can. You know, you trying to make sure that they have a relationship with God as best you can. But as some point they have to like you know take your faith and make it their own you know what i mean have you ever looked at and especially dealing with kids i find a lot more kids deal with faith they won't necessarily label um what if they're a lutheran or if they're catholic or they won't say you know what i i you know they'll say i believe in god but i don't want to get into involved in all the other stuff yeah. you know i yeah. think it's kind of a big picture but that's how i grew up yeah but i like the fact that younger kids or younger um uh the generation yeah um, is still finding it however they need to. That's right. I think so, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, did you see with um, going in, and again, we were talking about uh, uh, Judson, obviously, is a Christian college. Right. And the benefits. I was talking with Justin yesterday. Justin is actually one of, I still call him a recruiter. What's his official title? He is... Jack of all trades. But he he masters is, yeah. in recruiting, though, recruiting, fundraising. Yeah, he's just he's just a great asset to, to me individually and to, to Judson, you know, as a whole. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I said, I think there's some people, it's nice to be around like-minded individuals Absolutely. and kids, mm-hmm. you know, if that's what they grew up with and that's what they know. That's right. But I can also see how somebody might select to go to Judson because it might be their journey to find their way. That's right. And then to have themselves in that environment mm-hmm. makes it a little bit easier for them to do that. That's you right. know, I think there's mm-hmm. people that might not have had a big, strong, Christian background, Mm -hmm. um, but are really asking and searching for it and choose Mm -hmm. a a college like Judson for that purpose. Do you see any of that? Yeah, we got guys from, you know, from all walks of life, Right. some who are, you know, who are really committed to getting to know God and some who are still curious. You know, I get get more guys that's curious about it um, than I have, you know, that's really walking it out right now. And that's fine. These Uh guys are 18, 19 years old. Nobody's really figured it out yet. Like I said, when my kids were 18, 19, they was like, that's the last thing they were going to do is uh, (laughs) go to church twice a day, right? Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, we are talking with Coach Q, Quentin Demps here on the Coach Q Show, heard every Friday, and we're going to be talking a little bit about homecoming weekend because yeah. this is obviously it's been homecoming week and while welcoming back all the alumni so it's i'm sure you'll get a chance to see some of the people that you yeah. were coaching year before this year you know the ones well, who came well, not, back not really because this is our third year competing so we don't even have like a full senior class yet you know somebody who went from a freshman sophomore junior but, did, you, know but you would have maybe for people we who have a couple yeah we have a couple like, that may because come back. if you if you had any football oh yeah that's you know what i'm gonna saying say with yeah. it being a younger team yeah. because judson we were talking is like the youngest team In, Pro- is probably it a, the whole naia yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and that that's a whole nother story so i want to talk a little yeah. bit about that too because okay. that's that's kind of taking a, a leap of faith and knowing that you've got these uh mounds of clay that you can mold that's right you know right. and built and then the fortunate thing is too especially any of them that came in as freshmen or as underclassmen yeah. Yeah. these guys are growing together absolutely you know absolutely. we're going to talk about that a little bit more also talk a little bit more about uh quentin's uh background and and things that got him involved in sports and for you guys uh, if you have any questions for quentin and you want to hear any more about just even ideas about faith about yeah. judson university um one of these weeks we'll have somebody come and, and chat a little oh, bit cool. too about Judson yeah. University and and it's kind of nice to see all how that melds together and how it does it so perfectly to have uh, this wonderful head coach here in studio. Yeah. So we're going to take a real quick commercial break. We're going to be back with more Coach Q show after these messages. Oh, He's going to be sitting in the hot seat pretty soon, so you know if this mm-hmm. whole college gig doesn't work out, uh, <laughs> I he'll actually be, love radio. He'll be coming to my I side of love the radio. turf. Do you? Uh, yes, I love it. I, I like conversation. Uh, yeah, I really do like conversation. I think there's so much that people can take out of conversation, and I yeah. think especially doing something like this automatically. When I was, uh, I was, we were talking about doing the show, and and um, and that's why I kind of dig you and I were on the same mindset. <laughs> I think there's one thing to be talking about football, and I think there's another thing, and we'll get through that through yeah. the through the season, um, and talking about your career with the NFL, and and then making its way to Judson, and how I like to see how that journey happened. Yeah. Um, but I also think sometimes it's a uh, um, it's more important sometimes just to know people. I think people sometimes having conversation. Yeah. And uh, just listening in, you take out of it what you think you need to take out of it. Right. 
right that's you know right. that's good that's yeah good. That's good. I, when have you ever done that where you just listen to somebody talking and and not even part like you're not involved uh-huh. in it you know yeah. not not over eavesdropping but you just yeah. happen to be hearing something yeah and it, true that's that's yeah, great that's, yeah, yeah like eat like i mean you know what me like every everything i do i'm listening for god yeah it could be the craziest thing i'm like god was that you it can be anything i'm just like man every day i'm just like you know just just wanting to hear something mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean just i don't know he, I he, he, he speaks to you like that too he speaks to you from random conversations you know mm-hmm. he uses human creation to talk sometimes you know so we have a, uh, I, I find that in doing individual things with uh, um, the community and, yeah. and as a radio station, you get a lot of people calling and wanting to promote. And, and I'm always open to promoting because I think everybody yeah. deserves to have their, their voice heard. Right. However, um, you can't always be involved in everything. You can't be more than one place at one time. And, mm-hmm. and, and so you have to pick and choose. So you find yeah. ones that you, um, that you fear can reach people the most. Like there's something that's happened in that Judson University um, called Heal Elgin. Yes. Um, the, where they're going to take the remote uh, medical uh, group uh, uh, over there for two days and it's all free. Yeah. So they're doing dental work. They're yep. doing, you know, and so I work with co- um, uh, Dr. Terry on that. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So she's going to be coming in studio in the next, I think, in the next week or two. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. To talk about it. Yeah. Just because it's something that's so needed and so necessary. And right. sometimes uh, the, the obvious ways of you of showing your um, showing that you care or showing your faith. Yeah. Are some of them that you just have to not show. You, you know, they just have to they just have to happen. Meaning that. I don't have to say, yes, I'm going to have somebody in studio and I'm talk. you know, I don't yeah. have to praise that you're doing something good. Right, right. Just do something good. Exactly. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah and that's, and right. that's why I always love giving yeah. exposure to them and providing a platform for them to do that. Yeah. Because, and a lot of times they deserve it. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of people. I don't know. I can't remember. She told me one time, like, how many people volunteer. Yeah. But all the doctors, all the folks in there that set it up volunteer and they hustle for yeah. for 48 hours i'm excited to go see it you know i didn't i didn't go last year but i'm excited to be a part of it this year i mm-hmm. got some of my football guys going too so i'm excited to really get <laughs> you know to experience it as well yeah yeah I, i'm chuckling because the first thing that before they ended up doing hill elgin she did a 5k run um, I don't and, know about that part. <laughs> yeah, well, that part I did, and this is you where it? it fully enforced the. Yeah, I thought my knees were gonna fall off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it was a run walk, and so I did more walking than running. But yeah. I was I, <laughs> just my own mindset. We'd get to an intersection. I was like, all right, pick it up, Leah. Wow. All of a sudden, we'd get out of view again. I'd be like, Whew. was that part, was that part of Hill Elgin, the five k run? It was. It was before Hill Elgin came to be Hill Elgin. Gotcha. So this is probably. I think I've known Terry for I don't know six seven years, and actually that's how I got involved with the NFL alumni. Okay. With Tom Serpento. I don't know if you know Tom Serpento. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I think, is the head of the uh, anyway uh, the alumni the or something like that right. So a yeah. lot of I'd have a lot of the guys in here because they would use their name. To right. help get the exposure out there, yeah. and yeah, gotcha. and so yeah, so you know, That's I was cool. trying to save face, like, ooh, there's a crowd, picking yeah. up speed, and then yeah. all of a sudden, after I was like behind a tree, <laughs> yeah. not happening. Yeah. I truly, literally felt I placed third, and yeah. I think there was four in my age group. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the effort is there, so That's sometimes right. uh, right. the body gets the effort. The effort. I, I one thing I wanted to bring up with you is. Uh, uh, talking a little bit about um, growing up in Texas, you know, they always yeah. say uh, uh, I, I've got a sister in Texas. I've had other family in Texas. Uh, you were, were you in El Paso or did you just go to school in El Paso? Where'd you go? Yeah, up? I just went to college in El Paso. Where'd yeah, you go I grew, up in I Texas? I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, brother, sisters, do you have a big family? Yes. Yeah, so my mother was 14 years old when she gave birth to me. Mm-hmm. And um, I was the only child she had. Oh. But my, you know, my dad, who I've met probably twice in my life. Well, I've, I met, but, you know. Um, probably like had I know I had dinner with him one time. He made some good fajita tacos. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I didn't meet him till I was ten, and we probably had you know five or six interactions my whole life. So I didn't really know him. Don't really know him to this day. Mm-hmm. Don't talk to him to this day. But uh, my mother uh, did a good job of playing mom and dad. And um, there's a lot of strong yeah, my, women. <laughs> yeah, my aunties, my, my my uncles. You know they they all supported and um, you know loved on me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but then to raise a child on your own, being both parent, you yeah, know, but also then to raise somebody with a conviction and um, strength and knowing who you are. Be- there's a certain thing that comes with people to become athletes. Um, there's uh, people, some of them I in stories, right? Okay. So some of them I know that they're like, 
you know, um, that's my one focus. That's my one way to give direction. Okay. You know, that's my one way that I know it takes my mind off yeah. of, okay, um, if the situation is less than dire. I know many, many single parents that yeah. are so strong-willed in making sure that their child will be protected. Yeah. Uh, and in this case, too, a lot of black women because you you yeah. all of a sudden playing the father and mother. A child, when they're growing up, the, the, the child yeah. will love the mother to death. But then there's all of a yeah. sudden that turn of events that happens where all of a sudden you become the idler to the protector. Yeah. You know, um, did you see any of that when you were growing up? Yeah. That so Yeah. My mom. Yeah. I mean, I hear all that fancy stuff, but my mom just she just put that belt to my butt, yeah. you know, because I, you know, I, I grew up in an environment where, you know, you sell drugs, you, you get women, you do all that stuff, listen to music, you become a rapper, mm -hmm. you skip school, you know, this, you know, that, that environment. And she was like, nah, boy, you ain't doing that. Yeah. And she, she expressed that by whooping my butt and being very, very strict, uh -huh. you know, so, and I grew up not really, you know, liking her. Uh -huh. To be honest with you, but as I've gotten older, I'm like, man, thank you. Yep. I appreciate that. Have discipline. you ever said that? Like, just said it Yeah. Absolutely. I remember that day when Absolutely. I said to my parents, yeah. you know what? I'm sorry for all the you. junk I put yep. you through. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, and especially then with it just being one, yeah, exactly. um, yeah. you know, that, mm -hmm. that was like, there is no way. And, and being a younger mom being too. One, yeah. Being one and then a teenager, yep. 14 years old, yep. you, 14 year old, mm -hmm. 14 years old. She was, she would have been the age that a lot of the people start venturing off to get into those troubled exactly. areas, you exactly. know? And exactly. so, um, that probably was just as much of a blessing, yeah. you know, that she ended up having you because then it kept, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just, it's like, and you know what? She got to see firsthand how yeah. easy it is to fall into those traps yeah and but she you know she still out. she still had a hard life though i'm even, sure even after having me she still you know she's mm -hmm. trying to figure stuff out you mm -hmm. know? that's what i always that's what keeps me so humble is because you know i always feel like i had a hard life too mm -hmm. but then i think about her i'm like man yeah you've you got nothing to complain like, for it. I, yeah i think about her her mom you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so it's just i'm just grateful you know that uh that god is you know uh, been with me throughout it all yeah you know, us both actually you know so isn't it important it, it, i think that's such a, a good point I, that if sometimes you know we kind of have our own little pity party yeah. and, which is human you know I mean, right. that everybody goes through it right. but every time i think that i remember i had to uh, a, a health situation and then i was like man there's so many more people out there that have it way worse than right. I do. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Just back out of that pity corner. That's or you right. know, I remember somebody telling me that once. You know, why don't you just go have your own little party in your pity corner? You yeah. know, yeah. and I, you'd snap out of it. And you're like, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Thankful. that's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the one thing I had um, I had read and and uh, studying a little bit about you is that um, I had this great line and I wanted you to define it define it okay just okay. explain it to me and it says a pen a piece of paper and faith okay All and right. so what does that mean to you um so one of my gifts that I realized that God gave me is writing mm -hmm. and it comes from being the only child. Right. And always being in trouble, being in my room locked up. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> I didn't have anything else to do. Uh -huh. So um, I write a lot. I write, mm -hmm. I write, I write, I write my thoughts. I write to God, I write my prayers. Like I, if I, I could show you, like, I got about 20 notebooks filled front and back, and just writing, just writing, just writing. So I'm writing a book right now, too. So just to me, man, that's, that's my space of, you know, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I can really be um, totally. Q, totally Quentin, totally, totally savage, totally just all the all of me in that mm -hmm. one piece of paper. Because it's hard, it's hard even to this day to be, you know, totally myself because I'm still recovering from being a professional athlete where it's, it's hard to be, you know what I mean, like yep. yourself with everybody because so everybody wants something. So you gotta you gotta kind of like guard that you, comes Yeah, up. it's like hold up, wait, you know, so I'm still learning how to break out of that shell of being totally free in this world and um, you know, writing this, you know, kinda a way that I free up. Well, that just seems to go hand in hand. That was the obvious step when you say that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think, too, writing is something that instead of, um, I always say when you are overwhelmed with issue or problem or worry or yeah. that, I kind of always equate it to uh, uh, one of those rubber band balls. Yeah. And it's just constantly spinning. And and, That's right. and, 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 and the minute you can start writing something down, you're taking one of those bands off. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just slows it down a little bit so you can actually... Uh, approach it one by one yeah 
because you know otherwise right. it just seems like it's just jumbled so much right. and so writing down in my case mm -hmm. that's that's kind of one of my therapies is yeah. if i get it written down it, it takes it out yeah. not as much as you do and as yeah. loyal but i, I find you. that yeah. if i write it down not only um i use that tool not only to get it off my brain yeah. but i also that helps me memorize it so if it's something powerful yeah. i'll repeat it and write it so i memorize it and then yeah. it kind of stains your brain a little bit see hey to my players that may be watching this is why i've been on y'all head all week about taking notes oh yeah that's exactly why take notes of your mistakes so mm -hmm. you won't re continue to repeat those mm -hmm. and that's how you can be better that's how we're going to be better as a team is taking notes people think that they don't want to read the negative you know what do you mean um, I'm, I'm well because if, like they'll say if somebody had a bad day or, you know i think oh, every young girl yeah. grows up or any who with diaries or anybody who decides to journal yeah. every day if they decide to write a journal sometimes people will only put in the fluff because they want to look back at it and read it and say okay you know maybe that'll make it more positive yeah. for me and they actually have a better uh way of becoming positive if they read the the, the not so good stuff mm. You yeah, know, yeah. and you're talking about being vulnerable. Uh, yeah. If somebody's just going to have a journal that's all for themselves, you have to be vulnerable in that journal and yeah. say the negative in there too. Otherwise, how do you know how you've grown since then? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. That's good. That's 100%. Good. Yeah. 100%. So, um, so writing, and did you ever, because again, at that time in, in your room, uh, and there was a lot of people who were rappers and things like that, did yeah. you ever bring anything to music or you've to tune? You've been doing some research. I don't know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, you've been doing some research. <laughs> I don't want to put this out there for my players. But yeah, I used, yeah, I make, I, Vulnerable. You know, music is a, music is a form of therapy for me. Mm -hmm. It's a way that I, um, I vent and, um, express myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I like being creative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I've i dabbled with that before. That's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> I've made Christian music. I've made some other stuff too. But I love, I love you know, just being an artist, just being creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so one other thing I did want to mention. I don't also. like this feeling right now. <laughs> don't be over to me up on the job. air like that. It's my job. You're putting all my business out there. Right <laughs> no, but that's, that's that's good though. I appreciate that. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, uh, again, because it's all a part of there's there's mm. there's other kids out there who might not think. And that was one thing I wanted to ask too before we go to this real quick commercial break. I'll ask the question, then we're going to go to the break, and then I want you to answer it. Okay. So. Um, at what point in, in growing up and knowing um, what life was like uh, in, uh, or in San Antonio and uh, like you were saying that, you know, every kid tries to push the buttons, you yeah. know, and push their boundaries. Yeah. And so what is it then that helps a parent note or aunt or uncle, whomever, mm -hmm. coach? Note that this person has potential. This person is more than just yeah. any other athlete. Now we'll come back to that when we come back from That's the break really because good. That's a really good I want to give you a chance to think about that a second. We'll take a real yeah. quick commercial break. Again, it's the Coach Q Show here on WRMN every Friday from 11 till noon. We'll be back after these messages. And now, welcome back to the Coach Q Show right here on WRMN. And welcome back, everybody, to the Coach Q Show. And we are here joining Coach Q. That is Quentin Demps. Coach, we join you here every Friday from 11 until noon. We yes. talked a little bit about the weekend coming up. So do you have anything exciting planned for the players? We probably should mention a little bit about that. Uh, it's homecoming weekend. You can come yeah, watch the game. Yeah, we had uh, we had a crazy short day uh -huh. yesterday, you know, where the guys were in uh, shoulder pads and helmet and wore some crazy shorts. You know, uh -huh. just trying to find a way to make it fun for them. Yeah. You know, as we are uh, growing and becoming a team becoming a unit just finding ways to make it fun and then for homecoming man we, we you know for us it's business yeah you know i know they have a dance i know the school has done a great job of providing things for them events for them it's a dance tonight that they have to go to and so uh for us though football wise we you know it's business we're not you know so tomorrow, yeah, uh, playing dance, in Streamwood. Yeah. And for anybody who doesn't know, yeah. um, the games actually take place in Streamwood. I think yeah. eventually the, the goal is to have them on the field because you've got this beautiful new field beautiful started field. Yeah. Uh, at Judson right there at the university. Yes, so yeah. um, until that can accommodate, obviously they take place at, in Streamwood. That's right, Streamwood High School. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, game time tomorrow? It's 7 p.m. 7, 7 p.m. So yeah. all you need to do is head on over uh, tomorrow night, uh, even if you're going to do some, and, and maybe even we'll see if Coach Q will show up during the day. But uh, if you're done with uh, heading up to uh, America's First Responder Fest, you can cruise on over to Streamwood yeah. and support our own Judson Eagles, That's right. right? Bring some noise. There you go. That's the best. <laughs> do you, when you were um, uh, playing, uh, 
I guess, is that something that's always audible? Like I, I, I've, I've known several people who played in the NFL yeah. and I, I always am, uh, you know, do you guys ever hear it? And usually, you know, people are so focused on the game. It does get you psyched yeah. up and it gets you, you know, especially if it's an intense play. Yeah. Um, do you pay attention to the surroundings? Are you just like focused on who your opponent is? No, we, we, pay, <clears throat> we, no, we, of course, because it's the energy. We feed off of that energy. Yeah. You know? Like in the preseason, it's not as many fans, and you can tell too, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once the season starts, you know, it's loud. We feed off the energy. And then when the playoffs come, it's mm -hmm. even more energy for us. And so we love having the crowd there. We love the noise. Like we, pay, like we know it. We, we feel it. You know well, I mean? you know what? It's a, there's, there's people about pushing it and performing. That's right. You know, not that they don't do it all the time, but I think, yeah. like you said, it kind of gets you jacked up and it gets your adrenaline going. And it's like, yeah. okay, let's put on a show here. That's let's right. Really a show. I got to show it home. Out. Yeah. I got to mm -hmm. show out. People are watching me. There you go. That's <laughs> Let true. Let me show my skills off. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And again, uh, with homecoming this weekend. So again, 7 uh, p.m. tomorrow night. You can go check it out at stream in Streamwood uh, as they take on the uh, Tigers. All of it. Yep. All of it. Tigers. Yep. So I had asked you before we went to the break, um, you know, at what point mm -hmm. uh, it, do you do? Does a parent know every first of all, I think every kid wants to grow up to be an athlete. If they aren't going to be an athlete and they just know it's not in their genes then usually they want to be an announcer for yeah. sports or, um, you know, and I'm talking boys and girls. That's I right. love the fact that there's a lot That's of right. girls doing that as yeah. well now, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at what point? point do you know then that there's something that you have mm -hmm. that separates or is it is it uh uh you know there's a, i always go back to the old rudy expo you know mm -hmm. the 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 rudy movie yeah. or rudy i can't think of his last name right now but some yeah. of them who are just not the notorious like yeah you might have it and his passion yeah is what got him in passion and hard work got him in yeah at what point when you're growing up do you realize i've got something or i've got this tool or did somebody recognize it in you to to give you that kind of discipline yeah, so I think, you know, I think it's twofold. I think because it's it's difficult because some guys are late bloomers. Mm -hmm. and some guys you may not know are going to be special until senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. you know, whereas, you know, I knew, they knew about me right away. Like, and we found out when I, you know, at, at uh, family family cookouts, right? Okay. We play playing basketball with the family. I'm like nine years old playing with the teenagers, and I'm doing, you know what I mean, going hard against them. And so, like, oh, man, this guy, this guy different. How is he nine, you know, playing like a teenager? You know right. what I mean? So that's when I began to really you know mm -hmm. have confidence and like man I, man i am pretty good at this you yeah know? like i love competing and i just you know so my mom always tell me too man she would be like you know you came out of the womb an athlete yeah you know? so some mm -hmm. guys are just special like that and i was one of them guys you know not to my own horn but right no i yeah. I, I completely agree that yeah. I, had a, I, had a, I had a young age for sure so then did you ever when you know you have a tool or you know you've yeah. got the gift a yeah. gift right yeah then I, I've always found that anytime I just get, uh, I think that I know everything, something happens that just shoots me down a couple of notches and, yeah. and puts you back to reality. It's like, right. you know what? You're not as great. We can always learn. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I remember I had a teacher in school that would never give A's because they said A's are perfection. Yeah. And nobody's perfect or you shouldn't need me as That's a teacher. Right. That's right. Um, so, you know what I mean? Yeah. So sometimes I think we all kind of think, yep, yeah, nope, yeah. I got this down. That's right. And then it's, it completely takes you forever to recover when you kind of yeah. get shut down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't have that mindset. I didn't have any turbulence until I got to the NFL. Oh, really? Like I was that dude from not from eight years old all the way till I got drafted to the Eagles. I didn't even I, like till I, till I got cut. Uh huh. I, I had no. I didn't think I could ever be cut. Yeah. I got to, I got drafted. Like man, I'd never be cut. How did guys get cut? Like I'm I'm that dude. Yep. And um, I got cut, and that was my moment right there. Like whoa. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. What do you mean I'm not the best? Yeah. What do you mean? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So at that moment was when I was really humble. Then I got cut twice. Yeah. So it was just like a really... You got it the first time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, but I was really, really cocky and confident. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I miss that part of me too because I'm not that anymore. But, I mean, I had swag coming in the league. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had I had, that sauce, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. What you need, you got to have that, you know. But I got cut and, um, you know, got cut twice. And so I've still been recovering since. You yeah. Know what I'm so, uh, well, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I do. There's yeah a, for sure. we, we all yeah. think that we are, are walking yeah. high on life. And then all of a sudden something yeah. comes up and just kind of trips you. <laughs> and then yeah. you look around to say, first of all, did anybody see that? Yeah. And then yeah. you're like, okay, what do I have to walk away with this? For? You know, what That's do right. I learn from this? That's right. That's yeah. Right. Oh, That's I remember right. that too. And I think I, yeah. one point I, I had even had somebody say, oh, did somebody knock the princess off the step? That's right. You know? Yeah, you yeah, know? that's true. Yeah. And you always yeah. have somebody that will, you know, and, yeah. but that person is the same person that came up and said, okay, pick yourself up, dust mm -hmm. yourself off. That's right. Get it together. That's right. Uh-huh. Right. What are that's you going right. to walk away? Or what are you going to take away from this? That's right. That's you know? Right. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed, which I don't think I had mm -hmm. asked you about before, are you a golfer or do you just do yeah, that for? 
hurt. Yeah, I just yeah, I top golf. I just top golf for my foundation. But I, you know, I try golfing. I'm not that good at it. It takes some. It takes some work. You got to really work at that thing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. But I want to get better at it. I don't mind. I don't mind doing it. I actually have a good time. Um, you know, going to the golf course and just the scenery gives, mm-hmm. gives me peace. Like, that's oh my god the scenery gives me did peace. you and i have this conversation yeah, we did before. before yeah because yeah. i said that's one that yeah i yeah. don't care you could have the craziest the cra- day but yeah. she'll get out there and I just hit a, something I, mm-hmm. yeah i can't hit a ball 20 yards but that peace and you know just the scenery of traveling to hold from hole to hole is pretty pretty dope one thing if you if you do end up getting into golf because i did it for many many years um but if you do get into golf is uh you'll realize when it and especially being an athlete You'll realize when it connects perfectly, oh when you've got God. a sweet spot on your club, yes. and it's like you had the least effort behind it. You're like, where the heck did yep. that? Yeah. It feels like therapy, too. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's a great feeling. And then that's what chases you. That's what yep. you chase then to do yep. that again. Yeah. You know, you Effortless just want that to add. Like, yeah. I remember times picking up my, my driver and like, mm. see, you can just see the dots, you know, from the, the <laughs> dimples from the ball right in the sweet spot of the club, you know? That's right. Yeah. But then, uh, but like I said, then yeah. you kind of are working, you're hungry for it. So I think that's yeah. um, a lot of younger athletes, all of those little tools and everything that we brought up today are all parts of um, coaching and especially being responsible for younger individuals and, right. when it comes to college. Yeah. Um, from uh, I wanted to real quickly mention, and I know we are um, nearing the end of our show, but I wanted to mention a little bit about your foundation. I didn't really mm-hmm. uh, talk to you about that before, uh, but again, using something for the greater good. You've got a scholarship foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's a uh, foundation a few, uh, me and a few of my friends created probably like in 2022, 2021, I believe. And um, you know, we because I've always my whole my whole life I'm always giving. Like I just give, I just give, give, give. And so, we decided, man, to make it organized. Let's let's give, you know, in an organized way, and you know, help others. Well, ask others to help us give. You know, so we created the Quinn Dimps Foundation, and um, we went from just giving, you know, any kind of way we can to let's man, let's give out scholarships, man. Like education yeah. is important to people. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be a lifelong learner. You know what I mean? So. Uh, we've created to where we just we focus on scholarships, raising money for scholarships, and um, this is our third year, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. So, um, do you always do fundraising events? Do you do activities? I know you mentioned Top Golf. Yeah, we do that. We just try to focus on one one event because I'm so busy. Yeah. So, and it's, it's it's based in El Paso, where I went to school at. You know. Oh, so, is it? Okay. Yeah, we're trying to get it nationwide right now, but right now we're just trying to focus on one one piece of land. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Let's just focus on El Paso. A town that's dear to me because you know I became a man there. You know, mm-hmm. left my mom's my mom's house, been on my own there. You know, and um, the people of El Paso are good to me, so um, I want to help out there and give back there, and um, that's where it's based. And so, you know, that's what we're doing. Uh, and is your mom in El Paso? No, my mom's in Chicago. Oh, she's up here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say because otherwise, I'm guarantee people love having you home too. Well, it's not home. It's just where I went to school at. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. You know what I'm yeah, San Antonio. It just became like my second home. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah, I know um, uh, uh, Gilbert Brown and Leroy Butler. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gilbert Brown's from San Antonio, right? Uh, yeah. In Arizona? Yep. Yeah. He, yeah. Um, they are part of uh, one of their foundation is in the Gilbert Brown Foundation is in Wisconsin. Wait, um, no, Gilbert Brown is the D tackle from the Packers. Yep. Right? Yeah. I just, yeah, we were recruiting his son this spring. Shush, yeah, really? I met, yeah, I met him. I met him this spring in person. I didn't know who he was, though. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I don't, That's sometimes yeah. good, though. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I, I had an idea, but I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was the Gilbert Brown. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, and then there's uh, giving back to that. That's what you That's what you look for, you right, know. Um, right. um, they are part of the Wisconsin Association of Campground Owners, oh, so they cool. do all these presentations at campgrounds and things like yeah. that and around the area. Yeah. And especially, like I said, if you can do something to young athletes, to inspire mm-hmm. young athletes. To, the next generation. To have it, that's absolutely. Right. That's right. So um, what's, what, what do you do in the offseason if you're like, okay, so let's get mm-hmm. to football, and I know you're going to just say, I just have to deal with tomorrow, and then we'll talk about the rest. But no, it's cool. Yeah. In the non-football season, um, mm-hmm. I know you guys actually started practice quite early on in the summertime. That happens before school actually yeah. starts. Training but camp. what do you do then in the off-season? Recruit. Yeah, that's what Justin was saying. He's <laughs> like, nope. He goes, we're starting it right now. I have to recruit to be to build this dynasty that I'm trying to build. We have to get the right guys. And that's that's our main focus in the off-season is recruit and try to uh, you know figure out ways where we miss the mark during the season and fix those things but main focus in the off season is recruiting recruiting it, you know the jerry mcguire struggle <laughs> is real here guys because i was talking with uh justin about it and i and he said and i go because you know we we get to see the the yeah. end result mm-hmm. right and i said well how do you know then what your he goes coach tells me 
coach right. says, you know what, we That's need right. people on the line. We That's need right. this. We That's need right. this. And so they watch out for it. And they, um, I mean, it's it's a it's a very interesting subject. Like it'd be kind of fun uh, to yeah. chat about that sometime because he's like, to. you travel all over. And he mm-hmm. goes, and I said, well, you're probably looking at people from school and people yeah. that you watch. And yep. and he's and I said, do you have like other connections and other recruiters? Mm-hmm. Like if somebody says, if he knows somebody's looking for uh, uh, special teams, right? Mm-hmm. Um, does he say, I know this guy that's got you know yeah. great leg. Yeah. Okay, we'll take you, you know? Yes, yeah, right. That's so right. You, yeah. there's a there's a network there Absolutely. that they have yeah, and help like each a, other it's out. It's a formula. Yeah. It's a formula. Yeah, it's a formula. We're still trying to find it, though, too, because, like, even at, like, the Power 5 level, like, Dion's slogan is, I ain't hard to find. Right. right. Well, at this level, my slogan is, I'm going to come find you. There you go. I'm going to come exactly find you. It. I'm looking for you. I'm going to come find you. We got Justin. I got Jake. I got a whole staff of people. We coming for you, recruits. There you I'm go. I'm to find you, baby. And with that, we're going to sign off the for the day. There you go. All right. Well, good luck tomorrow. Homecoming Appreciate game. Thank you. You betcha. We'll see you next week. I bless you. All right. We'll talk to you later. We'll be back with more one-on-one.